Hello, Slidemore. Welcome. Um, we're doing kitchen stuff today, so I think the next thing was a coffee maker of some sort. I always draw the same coffee maker, so let's see. Coffee makers have glass as well. You guys are like into glass today for some reason. For some reason. Yeah, so again, just freestyling this coffee maker. This is a, just your standard. I actually don't use a, what do I use at home? I use a French press. So this is a little bit different for me. So I'm probably just gonna make some stuff up here. Yeah, I'm just totally making this up, but. Maybe you put the filter in here or something. Coffee grounds. Ooh, actually, maybe. Except now it's gonna look like a face. But maybe this whole thing slides out. And that's your like, maybe it's some proprietary filter that's in there. a screen like so is our handle just to balance this on the page I'm gonna throw in some sort of background element and we'll make this coffee maker dark or black yeah the title the title I kind of decided on the fly I just wanted to do kitchen stuff today so, sorry if you're expecting cars or something else. I feel like we get a lot of cars and shoes though. Friday will be another opportunity though, so if you have ideas or suggestions, just let me know. I don't know why there's buttons on the front. I probably don't need it if it's a touch screen, but whatever. Lots of glass stuff today, guys. I guess there's tons of glass in the kitchen, so this is all good, good practice. If I didn't nail it before, then I have another chance to kind of hit this with you guys. So thank you. This is sketch day. Thanks for joining, being a part of the stream. Just to tie the top to the bottom, I'm gonna use a similar shape here. Like so, and then let's throw a base on this guy. Maybe it's like a giant silicone foot or something. I like silicone as you can tell, or rubber. All right, something like that. Why do you hold the pen higher up with wrist elevated? Okay, good question. I actually do this all the time. And this is something that took me years to learn. So if it helps you, great. If it doesn't help you, that's okay. Just do it your way. Um, this is like way too big for the page, but holding the pen further up allows me, so if I'm, if I'm here, it allows me to see past my hand to the drawing. Whereas if I hold a pen like this, I can't really see where I'm going. And it's, it's kind of like life, right? If you can't picture where you're going, you're gonna mess up. You have to have a plan or at least some idea of where you're heading to increase your odds of success. Now, obviously it doesn't mean that everything has to be 
thought out, but I like being able to see what I'm doing. Plus, I've noticed personally, if I hold the pen a little higher up, I'm able to achieve a looser, more energetic sketch because I'm no longer depending solely on my fingers to do the drawing and I'm out of that writing mindset. And now I'm using my shoulder right here and my elbow to draw. So that's the big difference for me in holding the pen the way I do. All right, so back to this guy. And if you notice at some point here, we're kind of changing perspective. So this is probably your eye level right about there. And now things are starting to go downward. So real subtle, but something there. So I'm gonna make the coffee maker itself black. And then let's see. And then we'll have the screen. Should I make it black? I don't know. What color should the coffee maker be? Should we go like brawn and do orange or red or baby blue or something? I feel like black is just, you know, typical. It's hard to render black, but you guys let me know. I'll fix up the line line weight here. You let me know. some orifice in the top of the orifice is such a weird word but anyhow maybe there's a hole in the top of the coffee maker here blue or orange okay let's do blue I don't even know what blue this is. I'm just I'm just gonna go for it. All right. We're just gonna go for it. So light till you get it right. When in doubt, rough it out. That's what I do. That's what we doing here on Sketch a Day. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Turn on alerts, but better yet, teach someone, share what you know, share the love. You know, when I went to school, there weren't very many people doing things like this, where you could basically get free, at least visual design education online. So I wanted to kind of give back. That's how it all started. All right. So a little bit of blue there. I'm going to leave this kind of thing not blue. Maybe I'll do the same with the face so we can at least tie in design-wise. Like so. So like I said, light till you get it right. Contrast is your friend, okay? And I can identify a few areas here where I want to add some contrast. So for example, here where there's a shadow core, this is a rounded corner, as well as here. I'm gonna wanna go a little bit darker with the blue, but I don't wanna entirely bungle this. So <laughs> I need to find a blue that works that's not too heavy or intense. So I'm gonna do some quick tests in this set of cheap markers. And if you're curious about the markers, just search for marker on the channel and you'll find my review of these delicious Bianyo markers. And by delicious, I mean literally because I have tasted every single one. Just kidding, I haven't. Um, that'd be really weird, right? Can you imagine? I don't think I've even tasted a marker before. All right, so hopefully you can see the difference that's making already. And what you want to do, if you want to understand con oops, understand contrast a little bit better, is take a look. I'll fix that. It's not a huge deal, but 
It's still a little annoying. So what you want to do is just take a look around you in whatever room you're in and you'll notice that wherever a surface changes direction, so like the corner of the room or wall or anything like that, you have good contrast. And that's important, right? So that's what we're trying to do by placing this light light against this dark dark, okay? Same thing here on the side, I'm running out of space. Just like that. The reason I'm making this side dark is it's away from what I'm proposing is the light source. What's up, Santiago? Okay. I'll do one more sketch after this. We already did two, oh, let's see. We did a blender and we did a glass container here. We're doing another glass or transparent thing. I guess there's a lot of those in the kitchen, so understandable. I think I'm gonna make this central core gray. Same thing down here. And I'll use my chart packs for this, the add markers. They just make for a nice smooth, base. So I like that. So yeah, something like that. And then on the front here, I'll do the same thing. So this is, I changed this a little bit in the drawing. I want this to be indented or inside. So you could almost push on this and then pull your filter out or something like that. At least that's what I'm thinking. <clears throat> I'm not gonna do too much to the lighting there, but just a bit of stippling. Sorry, that was off frame. Just a little bit of stippling here for texture. Maybe a logo up top. To be a fun coffee maker, I like color. You probably wouldn't guess it based on my wardrobe that I use in the videos, but I do like color, bright color. Like I have, I have a pair of red pants, for example, like bright red. Okay, so because this is perhaps a little bit shiny, I wanna just kind of kiss the drawing a little bit with some of this deeper blue in a couple areas. Okay, just to help push that reflective appearance. Blend down. Like so. Yeah, we'll get to the, the vessel on the base here, don't worry. We're just saving that for last. Because it's going to be a beast. Alright, so our little foot here. Just preemptively, I'll shade in the shadow that I kind of hinted at. Maybe a little bit of a reflection. Boom. Alright. So that's what we have so far. Now I want to do this portion. And I was trying to decide if we should continue with the wood theme or not, but I'll just keep the top gray simple for now. And this is a, this, this, these grays are weird. I will say the chart pack. Um, this is actually a cool gray, but it does not look cool at all. 
I will upload the sketches after the stream to the Google Drive. And if you're wondering where that link is or what I'm talking about, that's in the video description. I'll update the thumbnail, add it to a playlist. So if you miss the stream for whatever reason, if you just had to watch Netflix instead of watching me, I put them in a playlist for you. So you can check those out. And just make sure you have subscribed and have those alerts on. And you really shouldn't miss when I go live. Okay, so the glass, once again, just for simplicity's sake, let's use those green grays. Get the outline in here. Now we do have coffee in the container, so we'll need to address that. It's gonna be a little different, but to get those blends, and maybe it's a bit of just superstition on my part, but I like to have that base color present if I can. So on the back side here, right? I'm gonna shade this in, but also trying to be aware of and respectful of any distortions that may happen in the glass or the liquid. Okay, so I'm going to shade that in. Just like that. And now, we'll just start with a lighter brown. And we're just going to build up, okay? We'll build up to where we need this to be. But the interplay of the brown and the blue Something I just wanted to make sure we had. Although I didn't shade the background here in, so. Or the handle. And I guess it depends on your roast. You know, if you have a light or dark roast, what your coffee is going to look like. But you it's very subtle, but you can see there, now we have that translucency that I was kind of talking about. Because marker ink itself is translucent. So all these colors are going to kind of work together. Blend, all that good stuff. All right. Okay, I've got 79, 49, 47, 44, 29. Got lots of browns we can play with. We'll start with this 47. Just like that. We'll just keep blending. But the, the blue still showing through and that's what I want is I want those colors to intermix. Okay, give that a second to dry up. Dry up, catch up, all that good stuff. And this is a pit artist pen, and I kind of like it for outlines, or I have been liking it lately. It has a brush tip. So if you're not careful or you've got a heavy hand, I wouldn't recommend using something like this, but it's nice for outlines. In the case of the glass here, it's also nice for getting those artifacts, like I mentioned. In the previous renderings, It's a nice bold pen, okay? Now the glass itself, yes, we do want some shading. I'm trying to decide if I wanna use a pencil here. It gives me a sh chance to show a different approach. So right here on the glass, for example, little bit of pencil 
onto the lid for the shadow core. It's a little bit different, but another way you could approach this glass. And then on the inside of the core here, if I want to make it any more intense, just tip the pencil up. And now we have a nice blend on this side. We can get a nice light blend on the other side, maybe on the back as well. And then once we hit it with that white, it should really start to pop. Rotate your page if you have to. What's up, Hector? Rotate your page if you have to, to get that line that you need. Just hit with some pencil. All right, the screen, I'll take care of that using pencil as well. pretty sure I have videos on that but um, it's a good way to kind of clean up your sketch so as you have double lines things like that I mean you want to be careful not to make it look too much like a cartoon but it's a good way to help things just pop off the page a little bit more okay is this cool gray yeah I don't want to use that I want to use my basic gray three and I'll go ahead and make this lid a little bit darker you know part of this is going to be in shadow so we'll just make that darker right through there in this little recess as well time for one more sketch after this like I said I'm running low on all the fuel today <laughs> all right just like that so if you see a white spot on a screen like this it that's kind of just an approximation of a reflection that's in the environment. So it really just depends on the lighting and what you see here. My apologies if the stream's slowing down a little bit. I think everyone's trying to stream these days. But I will post the recording, so don't worry, I got you. Okay, so... I want to go kind of dark to light on this screen. So dark in the upper corner here and then light right there. And then right underneath, we'll go a little bit darker with the pencil. If you're using a good marker paper, it typically has a good tooth to it. Tooth meaning the grain. And so it's just kind of a delight, if you will, to use a pencil on marker paper. It's expensive, but it's really nice. Okay. Just like that. And let's throw some text. Maybe right there. And now I'm gonna finish up on the coffee vessel, the handle as well. And let's say the handle's black. Again, not shading to the very edge here. Meaning here, well, let's use a different pen. I don't want to mess up. So here's the outline, like so. Now I'm going to take this pencil and just kind of shade in from the outline. I'm 
that's going to be my reflected light just on the perimeter of the edge. And you can do the opposite as well. So if you want to show, for example, a little bit of light and you went too dark like I did, you can just grab a white pencil. I'm hoping mine's close by. And just kind of touch it up. Oh yeah, there it is. You can just grab a white pencil like this and just touch up or enhance where you need it to, to be enhanced. And finally, a little bit of acrylic pen here. Okay, so now we have a little reflection. I'm gonna flip this tip around. These pens are cool. You can actually remove the tip, refill them, flip them, make a mess. It's, kind of, it's literally like having paint on hand, which is really nice. Just like that, boom. Some white on the far side as well. And if you're in doubt, you can just look at, you can always look at a picture for reference and try and, but more importantly, try and understand the mechanics of what's happening. It makes it that much easier to ground things in reality and present things in a way that people would understand and appreciate. So it doesn't feel weird, like, what am I looking at? I'm gonna go a little bit darker on part of the coffee here, so right about in here, the base, and this backside. Something like that, and just another step. This is a 49, E49, if you're using Copic. If you're following along. Nice and dark, boom. But it's very, very subtle. But that blue still showing through, right? That's really what I was after. All right, so something like that. Now, if I had a blue paint marker, I did order some. <laughs> But if I had a blue one, I could add just a little bit of blue on the bottom here, you know, because the blue would be reflecting into it. Same thing here on our coffee maker lid. Could add just a little bit of blue in there. Mix that with some gray. And that's just gonna help this feel more like it's all part of a scene. Okay. Very, very subtle, but that blue is right in there.